experience grabbing Go Advice, and I just had cataract surgery. I'm going to share that with you in a few minutes. Well, actually, I'm going to start like right now. We're just going to jump into it. How's that? There's no need to wait. I'm excited. I had it done yesterday. Today, I went for my first day post-op appointment. They said my vision is, get this, ready, drum roll, 2030. 2030, not 2020, but 2030. I am so happy. I could not even see the big E, you know, that huge E that's like this big on the screen. I could not see the big E. I couldn't tell you it even was a big E. It's like I would see just a couple of pieces. It didn't even look like an E. Okay, so that's how bad off this was. So to hear the news I'm down to a 2030 is awesome. Totally awesome. Let me tell you how I got there, okay? And let me tell you this, please stick with my video. I have had two cataract surgeries, one with laser and one that was cut out. And I'm gonna tell you the difference between the two and which one I, as a real person, that's an unpaid sponsor for the person who did my surgery, I'm gonna tell you exactly which one I like better. Because you too could be looking at getting cataract surgery and not know whether you wanna get the laser procedure or if you want them to do it the old-fashioned way. So I am going to be your person to answer that. All right, I'm going to try to make this quick, short, and sweet. Um, so no way to make it too quick, but I am going to try. So stick with me. If you want to skip ahead a little bit, be, feel free to. And if you like my video, please subscribe. I'm trying to build my subscribers up, so please help me out and just click subscribe, click like. Um, ask me questions if you want to at the bottom. I'm really good at coming back, trying to answer and be helpful as much as I can. And again, I am just a regular person with a YouTube channel. Um, I should have named it something like your mom's YouTube channel. Um, I don't know. But anyways, it's grab and go because my kids are like, Mom, you're always giving great advice to people. So they actually coined it grab and go. Um, I go by Gigi for my name, so if you want to leave me something in my name, Gigi. That's it. Okay, so we're going to start with this. Um, my preference in procedures. The doctor told me that he felt comfortable doing it either way um, before getting the surgery done and choosing an actual uh, sur eye surgeon to do it. I have gone to four other places. I kid you not, four other places. Um, I went to two different hospital groups, and then I went to two places that had businesses that are out on the side, kind of like, um, you know, these little places that do eye laser surgery, PRK surgery, uh, cataracts, and they have like a freestanding building or something. Well, I'm going to tell you, first of all, I was intimidated by going to a couple of um, major hospitals here. I thought that they were going to charge a lot more. I was completely wrong. Um, I will tell you this, I got two different prices at two different hospital physicians. Um, so that is something key to think of, is two different hospitals, two different prices, and even one of those tried to encourage me to do the laser procedure on this eye. Um, when they do laser, they charge more. Um, I, the quotes that I got for if they needed to do laser, all three were in the 2000s. That would be on um, top of the regular cost. So <clears throat> this is an incredible hospital. Actually, this hospital, without naming which one, is better than the other hospital I went to. I asked the surgeon in there, um, I said, listen, I'm willing to pay, it's usually a couple of thousand more for the laser. I'm willing to pay that if you think that's the way I need to go. And he told me no. He said I can do either. And I asked him which one he's more comfortable with, which one he has more success with. He said he's equal, he's well trained in both, and he has the same success either way. So he said it's totally up to you and your preference. I asked him if the laser uh, surgery was shorter. He said no. He said actually it's a few minutes longer because of the prep that they have to do. So it's not even shorter. 
Well, I spoke with a person who had, he had done their surgery. He cut it out, asked them if they had any problems. She said no. She, she was afraid. And she said no. She did great, had no problems. And she's younger than me. Unusual to see people our age with cataracts, but it is years of being out on the lake, being out in the sun, um, laying out with those reflector things. If you remember those in the 70s and 80s, those little things that like reflected the sun. Um, yeah, doing all kinds of crazy things to get tan. But um, no wonder I have cataracts. Um, so yeah, so she had the, the, the cutout surgery. I talked to this guy, the surgeon that did it. I just checked out his credentials. He was a good doctor. And again, it wound up being far less than the procedure would have cost at any of the other three places, even if I went with the traditional cutout. All right, the instructions that they gave me, if you wear contact lenses, and every doctor can be different, that is key, people. You have to ask your own doctor. If you wear soft contact lenses, you have to quit wearing them one week prior to surgery. If you wear hard contact lenses, it's about four weeks prior to surgery. But ask your doctor. Number two, the night before my procedure, no food, no water after midnight, except to have a couple of sips. That's right, here's my water bottle. Just to have a couple of sips, just like not, not even going down to this label, like just a couple of sips to get two pills down with. Very little water. The reason is, is when they, well, there's a few reasons, but to me, I think, when they lay you down to do the surgery, um, you're not perfectly, your body's not perfectly straight. Your head area right here is going to dip down a little bit so that your chest and stomach is going to be a little bit above it. So it's going to, you know, it's going to be flat, but they position this part of the table so it goes down just a little bit for the surgery. And you don't want anything coming up, Okay. Plus, some people get sick with anesthesia. So, um, people who have diabetes, I don't have diabetes, know nothing about it. But people who are diabetic really have to ask, do you take your medicine or not? Because uh, from briefly what I've read, it looks like people may not take it um, because you're not allowed to eat before you go get the surgery. And that is such a serious thing. That's far more serious than me. I just have reflux. So please ask your doctor if you're diabetic what you need to do. Um, that was pretty much it. Get a good night's sleep, go in. Um, during the procedure, it was great. They gave me an IV. Uh, they put it here in my hand. You can't even see it right now, but it was in through there. The IV was mainly for the medication that they gave me. I did not go completely asleep. I did not see anything that they were doing to me. I did see like a pink, looked like a pink light, and I could see the shadows going across the light, something kind of like this. You know, I could see the, the shadows, and my eye is on the other side here. And I could see like shadows, you know, like where they were moving, going through this area that looked pink. Nothing gory. <laughs> Um, didn't last long at all. I don't know. It felt like 15 minutes in there. Maybe less. Did not feel long. When I came out, went to recovery room. Did great. Loved talking to the nurse for a few minutes. She took my blood pressure again. Uh, before they put me, uh, before they gave me the IV, they did do an EKG, which was great. I don't know if everyone does that. They gave me some special glasses to wear home. I'll show you the patch that they put on. This patch has perforations in it, little holes that you can see. And the tape, I can actually leave it to where it's open and just tape around the sides. This is to keep my hair from going in my eye like that because you don't want to have any reason to scratch your eye. No reason. You don't want to touch it. You don't want to go in there and dig or anything. My eye's not itchy, but you never know. I mean, you could feel like you, you know, had like a little loose hair or something and you forget and you touch it. This is a reminder, no, no. Um, 
Yesterday I was told to wear this the entire time and to sleep in it. Today, one day later, my directions changed. I can take this off the entire day. I only put it on when I can take a nap and go to sleep. I did take it off for a little while today and put my hair back, you know, back in a, in a ponytail to make sure that it was well secured and it wasn't going to go in my eye. Um, right now I just have it down loose, but when we finish this video, this booger's going right back in. Um, so yeah, that's the instructions for today. They sent me home with these really cool glasses that I get to keep. Uh, these glasses will also fit over regular eyeglasses if you need them. They just go right over and they fit. They're extremely super dark on the sides, as you can see. Um, no light is going to get in there on the sides. Get to keep them. <laughs> Make sure if, uh, if you get these glasses to, be, to wear them the next day for your appointment and any time you have to be outside. You don't want a whole bunch of light going in there yet. It's not fully, fully healed. He told me it takes about a week for it to heal. Drops. The, what they gave me to take when I got home is they gave me a very, um, let's see, they gave me a very good list here that I will show you with the name of my drops on here. And that is the name of the drops. And all I do is I go in there and I fill out the little circles. I have three drops right here that I am going to be taking for one week. I have to take them four times a day. So that means this one goes in, I wait five minutes. This one drop goes in, I wait five minutes. And in my last drop, one drop goes in, wait five minutes. So that's a total you know, about 15 minutes or so. You start here and then you have this one and this one. 10 minutes, 15 minutes. But you have to time them in between. Very important. Key things, only one drop. One, not two. Make sure the person that's doing your drops, if you're lucky enough to have someone to do them, that they are cautious. One drop only. And you have to wait five minutes because if you don't, this drop, none of these drops will absorb properly in the eye. Do this, let that stuff just get in there and absorb. All right, the medications that they gave me may be very different from the medications that they give other people, uh, especially with different clinics. So I do know that with this eye, I was given three drops. One of my drops had a pink cap, uh, none of these do. But I was given the same sort of protocol. So for one week, the drops are four times a day, one drop each. For the week two, I'm going to do three times a day, so that'll be every eight hours, and it's still one drop each. Week three, and they did it so lovely here on the list. Week three, I'm going to do two drops. Uh, well, I'm going to do each one of these three, but it's going to be twice a day, so that'll be every 12 hours. And then my week four, down here at the, well, at the bottom, um, that is just going to be one drop a day um, for a whole week. It's going to be one drop of each one, same succession. One, two, three. Boom, boom, boom. And that's it. So for this week, it's kind of annoying because it's every six hours I'm having to, to do these drops. Next week, it's going to be every eight hours. Thank goodness. And then the third week, every it'll be twice a day. And then the last week is just going to be once a day. Uh, very important that they let you know which order to put these in. If you can see right there, the lady that helped me was really nice. Uh, she told me that if I take the one with the white cap first, this one here is going to burn just a little bit. And every time I use this drop, it burns less. This one here has like a prednisone or something in it, so it's going to calm down any itching and burning that you, that well, that I did get with this one. It started like itching a little bit, so I couldn't wait to get this one in. And then the last is an antibiotic, okay? Now I'm going to take this off so you can see what it looks like and see what kind of thing that they gave me to put over my eye. They sent me home with a little kit that had... 
room to put my medications in. I picked all these up at the pharmacy, the meds. They called them in, <clears throat> but they gave me plenty of extra tape. I have to sleep in this thing at least for a week, one week, any nap, any sleeping. And for me, like I said, in the daytime, I'm still going to wear it some. But here is my eye. This is one day post-op. There's no bruising, uh, no redness, anything like that. And it's this eye here, my left. So I'll let you kind of look around. I'll look up. I'll look down. Look left. Look right. Okay. And the <clears throat> shield that they gave me, I'll just kind of show it to you. I took a little bit of the tape off, but it is perforated. I really don't know how to get this thing in here to show you well enough, but it's perforated. There's little holes right there that you see. And to put it on, there's going to be a little area right here that goes over your nose. Ah! I'm actually using my camera in order to do this. And so this little bridge is going to lay across there. And you just tape it back on. And you can use less tape, as you see. Um, I still will have to tape a little piece over there. They gave me some tape to bring home. And again, my vision today was 2030. Uh, they don't think I'm going to need any more surgeries at all. They are hoping that what's going to happen is that this is going to give me perfect vision. Like someone who goes in and they, they don't even have cataracts and they pay money to get PRK or LASIK surgery so they can see better. This right here is most likely going to give me perfect vision. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. The doctor told me he was impressed with how well I'm healing and everything. He says, complete success. I told him, I said, all glory goes to God and to you for being such an awesome doctor. All right. If you like my channel, please click like and subscribe. I'm trying to build up viewers. This is Grab and Go Advice. Spread peace, love, and as always.